All right, tutorial time. G'day everyone, welcome to another video by myself, Andrew DFT. Now this video is, yes, showing you how I go about doing my paint jobs. Now they are, in somewhat respect, Borderlands style. It is a very 2D aesthetic. It's a very cartoon appearance, if you want to say, but I personally love them. Now every prop I've produced in the past year and a half has had this aesthetic applied to it. I personally just love the unique appearance of it, especially when people come into uh, my room here and see the designs for themselves. It obviously stands out completely different because they're not used to seeing this cartoon appearance. If you were to look at this uh, Overwatch rifle, pistol, SMG, whatever, right now you can see that this has the aesthetic, but this side doesn't. And there's quite a clear definition on how the detail stands out and it kind of segments the gun and highlights the 3D perspective quite a bit more. So I just finished this pistol yesterday and I'm extremely happy with how it turned out. Now this will be the basis for the tutorial today. You'll get to see the standard process I go through from the raw foam to this final piece and it's actually not very hard. It just takes some patience and letting the stage is dry before moving on to the next one and kind of pre-planning what your design should look like so that way you actually get what you're trying to achieve. All right, but let's stop talking with the intro and jump in and get started. So this is the final prop in its, well, raw form. It's ready to get primed with all the awesome detail to be secured and covered so that way the raw foam is protected. To do that, I actually use PVA or wood glue, a medium brand version, so not like a cheap budget, not like a super expensive one, so about $7. I'm gonna dilute it with a bit of water so it allows the PVA to be a bit more flexible and will seep into those crevices and detail section rather than glog or really clog it up. I don't know what words to describe, but you know when you pour something thick into a hole and it just kind of doesn't seep in properly, we want to avoid that. And that's why adding water will allow it to stretch and go the distance to really cover this whole prop and give it a good protective surface. Now, once you've coated it, you're going to leave it for about three to four hours. So that way it is going to seep in and really give the foam a great covering and it should be touch dry. But once it is three or four hours later, you can then grab a fine grit sandpaper and go across the whole surface and the detail of this prop. After the dry stage, it will be left kind of um, rough and raw. That's just because the PVA glue is just like that. But with a nice little sanding, it should be nice and smooth, ready for the painting. Now it's at this point, I would recommend that you do have all your paints ready to go so you know what layers you're gonna be applying first. And I usually work from my dark bases to my lightest colors and then do the final touch-ups. So now when I'm going ahead in the painting process, I actually go ahead and start with a black primary acrylic coat. This is only really to be applied to be an extra layer of protection so that I can do the main undercoat in a black matte spray paint. Now this will go ahead and get into all the nooks and crannies and detail that I want that a paintbrush might not be able to reach. Plus it gives a more uh, comprehensive um, underlay than the acrylic plus there's no brush marks or anything and it gives you a nice matte black surface to start applying all your layers of paint to. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab my darker gray tones and apply them to the spaces that I like and then go and add my lighter tones and slowly build it all up into the individual segments to really break out this design and have it look like the final piece we're going to achieve. I'm not doing any kind of merging or detailing at this point until I've got all of this covered with all my main tiers of paint. Now this is a segment that only applies to this design because it has a covenant texture which I use uh, bokeh wrappings, flower bokeh wrappings because they're like this cool texture in a plastic and I just simply use the black matte spray paint again in the very light sprays just to create that texture on the surface. But if it wasn't using a covenant prop, I would actually go ahead and just do this part now, which is going ahead and applying a very light spray of the black matte at a distance to kind of bring all those colors together and give it a more desaturated look rather than the very bright, vibrant colors that the original acrylic paints have. But you can definitely see the difference, how it all kind of blends together and becomes a bit more realistic in terms of texture, tone, and contrast. And now comes my favorite part, and that's actually applying the 2D aesthetic. Now this is actually the easiest part as well. It just takes a lot of time and patience and care in applying all these lines. I'm using a see-through ruler here so that way I can see exactly where the lines are being applied. If you didn't have a see-through, you might have a bit of problems, but all I'm doing is going and applying different variations of line thicknesses to all the edges and the detail on the prop. Usually on the interior, I will apply thin lines and kind of stagger them or break them up. 
but on the edges of the prop I'll do darker thicker lines to really give that cool cartoon aesthetic. You can see here some of the lines aren't always complete, some of them aren't full, some of them are just a nix. You can use my uh, designs here as reference, but you can definitely see the before and after shots. It really makes a massive difference because I personally just don't know how to paint up a really good looking realistic prop. But we're not done yet. The final touches I like to add on my props is little white nicks to build up contrast and create some aspects for the eye to look at that really just staggers the visual and creates some more interesting designs and detail on this prop and especially highlight some of the detail that you've put a lot of time and effort into. And all I'm using is just some pure white acrylic, not watered down or anything, and just a very fine paintbrush and creating some little nicks and grooves on some of those unique pieces that I want to highlight to kind of just create a more interesting look because your eye is now looking all over the design rather than at it as a whole. So that wasn't hard, was it? It's a relatively easy, straightforward process. You can make it far more difficult if you want, if you want to change up the, the length or the thickness of these black lines, or if you want to use way more different paints, you could have a, a three-tone gun instead of just having two different shades of grays and blacks and then one color, you could have two different primary colors or three different primary colors. That all depends on what you want in your design, but the primary thing is you just have to know what you're wanting before you actually start the whole process. Even go on Photoshop or Paint or whatever you have to plan out the color, the tone, and the style so you are always working with a blueprint in mind. But that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that tutorial and you do go try it yourself. I personally think it adds a far more enriching uh, look to the designs and actually makes them far better. I personally, like I mentioned, I'm just not that great at creating realistic looking props from foam. It is a challenge because the surface material just isn't one to work with that represents hard plastic or resin as easily. And especially with working with spray paints, it just doesn't work too well on this foam. So this is a fantastic way for me to kind of get around that and still have an amazing looking prop for display and uh, not have it be too, dark, uh, be too hard to create. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you create a piece, share it with me on Instagram, Andy underscore DFT. And if you want to produce this yourself, you can grab the templates free in the description box below. But until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you later.